I found a, a swapping advertisement in an online site and the guy wanted to swap from Warrington to Lithgow and I wanted to get out of Lithgow and go to Sydney and pursue some sort of a career and maybe get a job and he saw the house I was living in and we both agreed to swap and then I moved down to Warrington. My first impression was that it's a bit of a rough area um, but I thought I oh, will give it a, f a fresh start and see what I can make of it. Uh, when I actually moved in, I was confronted by a drunk tenant who's right up against my face. And this was after I'd had a long day of moving stuff and traveling and everything like that. And he was right in my face and the smell of alcohol was putrid. I did not feel safe and I was constantly anxious, but I was good at keeping, keeping it to myself and I was keeping to myself the death threat from the tenant of Unit 1 was in late 2009, around about November. That's when he approached me with the, the when he said those words, I'm going to burn your unit down, I'm going to throw a fragmentation grenade into I'm going to burn your car. And then later he approached me with that piece of concrete. The next death threat came from the tenant of Unit 16. He said he was going to get some friends on the me and I was going down. Going down means dead. So I got an AVO out against him. It took a long time. I didn't get any help, any morale boosting or any help from housing and it took a long time but I had to do it. The next death threat was the written one which was fairly recent back in April. It was written on my front screen door. In the the graffiti was the words, I kill you dog. Housing rang me up but he had the attitude that it was my doing. And he had this attitude of, you know, you, this is the attitude they frequently had with me. It was... It was my doing, or I caused trouble, whatever like that. Initially, the, the police were lacking in empathy. They, they just didn't seem to be very interested in it. They found it a hassle. Now, they're overworked, and they're dragged out to, all these, to meet these different people who cause trouble. And it, obviously, understandably, it takes its toll on their nerves, and they hate being dragged out. But after a while, I got the impression that they started to take it more seriously. I felt very isolated. I felt very, I felt neglected. Yeah, I felt very neglected, bad, poorly done by, by, initially by the cops, but eventually by, more so by housing New South Wales. I felt really let down by them that they didn't ha have any measures to take to deal with these people to correct their, their bad behaviour. I, I felt like I was being made to look the bad guy, with, judging by the attitudes of various case managers who were dealing with the problems and um, actually found a lot of them to be unsympathetic and not very humane. So I felt very isolated, I felt downtrodden, and I felt like, I don't know what I'm going to do. It made me feel afraid, I felt completely isolated after what had happened, especially in regards to death threats, because as far as I'm concerned, the biggest problem with housing is that people are allowed to run amok and no consideration is given toward the safety of other, other tenants in these blocks of units. The housing department don't give any consideration for people who bullied, such as myself, people threatened or assaulted, such as I have been. They don't, just don't care. I was actually starting to think, maybe I'm better off dead, because no one's helping me. I'm not getting anywhere. Uh, people seem to make promises, they're hollow promises, and or they just they can't they can't help me or they don't or, or it's a question of money so i started to think maybe i'm better off dead i start to actually feel victimized to the point that i felt like maybe it'd be better if i just got hit by a truck or something or maybe something less painful